Hey everyone, Simon here with Top Tennis Training and in this video I'm going to show you a few of the main footwork patterns that everyone should master for tennis. Now some of these are very basic and some of them are more advanced but it's important that you know all of them and you work on them so that you can start getting to wider balls so you can start feeling more in balance and so that you can start moving like your favorite tennis players. So the first step and the most important step in tennis when it comes to footwork and movement is the split step. Now you may be thinking, well I already know about a split step, but how often do you actually go out and work on your split step? How often do you focus on making sure that you're timing your split step correctly and you're using the split step in the correct way? So what exactly is a split step? So whenever my opponent makes contact with the ball, I want to be doing a little split step like this. Now there are different variations. It will depend on where you are in the court, the situation, where your opponent is. So you'll have different variations of the split step, but the foundation is simply having your feet around one and a half to two shoulder widths apart and being on the balls of your feet. So instead of being on your heels, I'm now lifting the heels off the ground and I'm on my balls of the feet. Now the split step will allow you to push off in any direction. So whenever my opponent makes contact, I have no idea where they're going. I might assume that they might go down the line, I might be thinking that they might go cross court, but I really don't know until they actually make contact. So in order for me to be balanced and be able to push off to my forehand side, to my backhand side, to a short ball or going back for a deep ball, I need to be balanced and centered. And the split step is that base. So I'm in that ready position here, and as my opponent makes contact, I'm doing a little jump. Now before we go any deeper into the lesson, if you're serious about improving your game, then make sure you have subscribed to the channel and you turn on that notification bell. Now later on in the video, I'll show you a simple drill to help you improve your split step. But let's move on to the next step. So the next step is the side shuffle. So the side shuffle is simply when I'm facing the net or when I'm moving to a ball, I use this side shuffle step. So I can go in any direction. I can go forward and backward using this side shuffle. So if I'm going back for a deep forehand, I can do this. If I'm coming forward for a short forehand, I can do this. If I'm recovering from a forehand, I can do this step. If I'm hitting a backhand, I can do this step. Now the side shuffle step is mainly used in two situations. The first one, when you don't have very much distance to move back or forward to a forehand or a backhand, you can use that side shuffle step. So if I'm in the middle, if my opponent hits it to my forehand side, but I have to move back, but I don't have too much distance to cover, I can do my split step, get back on this right leg, so pivot, and then use a couple of side shuffles to get in position. The other situation is when you hit a ball that's not too wide. So I've hit my forehand and I only have a couple of feet to cover, I'll use that side shuffle step. So I've hit my forehand, now I just have to get two steps back and then I'll do that second one as a split step. Another time you'll use it is on the smash, if the smash is quite close to you. So you'll land off the split step, you'll pivot around, you just have a few feet to cover, I'll use that side shuffle step and then hit my smash. And once again at the end of the video, I'll show you a simple drill to help you improve your side shuffle step. Now the next step we're gonna speak about is the important crossover step. The crossover step is this. I'm now pushing off my right leg, I'm going to my left side and I'm now crossing over this left leg with my right leg. So I'm doing this step across the body. So it's this. So I cross over to my right now with my left leg, crossing over, crossing over. Now 
Now the crossover step has many benefits over the side shuffle step. So if I want to get back to the middle of the court now and I use the side shuffle, one, two, three. It takes me about three side shuffle steps to go from the tram line to the center of the court. If I use a crossover step now, I can get there probably in one and a half or two. So one, one and a half, and I'm back in the middle. So I can cover much more ground, but also it uses less energy because I'm using the momentum of the body and the legs are just following along. Whereas with the side shuffle, I have to use the leg muscles to actually propel myself in any direction. But with the crossover step, I'm simply using that momentum I'm creating by moving this way, but now I'm just simply allowing my leg to almost drag along using that crossover step. The more space you now have to cover, that's when the crossover steps become the key step in that recovery. And later in the video, I'll show you a really good drill to help you improve your crossover steps to get more distance with each one. Now we move on to the next step, which is the cross behind step. So we've done the crossover step where you're crossing over. Now we're doing the cross behind. So I'm in this position, instead of doing a crossover, right leg coming across my left leg. So in front, I'm going behind, and that's why it's called the cross behind step. So if I'm moving this way, I can go cross behind, cross behind. And if I'm moving to the right, cross behind, cross behind. Once again, you can cover quite a large amount of distance with a couple of these cross behind steps. So the cross behind step is a great way for you to move in different directions using those cross behind steps. Sometimes you can't use a crossover step. So let's say I've hit a wide backhand. I've been pushed out wide, I'm way off the court. Side steps won't work, but also my legs aren't aligned to allow me to do a crossover step. So I've hit a wide backhand, I'm in this kind of position here. Now my back leg, my left leg, is gonna cross behind and I'm back in position. So we'll often see Federer using this cross behind step when he's being pushed out wide on either the forehand or the backhand side. So I'm pushed out wide, I stop, the feet aren't aligned, cross behind, cross behind. And the last step we're gonna cover in this video is that first step to the ball. So that initial step in getting you to a ball, especially a wider ball or a shorter ball, you have to be quick on, you have to be explosive on. And often we see players struggle with that first step, they're not explosive, they don't know how to actually move to the ball. So a common error that players will make is because they've been taught the side step, the crossover step, or the cross behind step when recovering, they think they also can move to wider forehands or wider backhands with those same steps. So they end up moving like a crab. They do their split step and they start moving like this and then they start to prepare the racket. This takes too long, it's wasting time, you're wasting energy and it's not gonna work in the long run. The much easier option is to land off that split step, turn your body, so pivot around the outside leg. If I'm going to my forehand, this is my right leg. If I'm going to my backhand, this is my left leg. So I'm on the balls of my feet, I land, I pivot, and now I just do a normal running step to that ball. This will cover much more distance, this will save me energy throughout the course of a match, and I'll get there much quicker and have time to then set up. So I'm landing, pivoting, and then sprinting out. So land, pivot, run. And that first step with either leg. So if you're going to your forehand, it'll be this right leg. If I can make this part more explosive, I can cover much more ground with that first step. If it's explosive, I land and I push off. So once again, we're gonna show you a drill in a little while on how to improve that explosive power with that first step. So the first drill is for that split step. I'm gonna get in that wide base and I'm simply going to hop over the line and come back, always being on the balls of my feet. So never going on the heels when I'm doing this drill. So there and back is one, and we go for 10 of those in a row. That's the first drill, very simple, very basic, and you can do this anywhere, even in your own home. Going from the doubles tram line to the singles and back, always being in that split step position, so wide base, and always maintaining my body weight on the balls of my feet. 
So, there, and back. That's two. And you can go for five of those, 10 of those, depending on your fitness level. So the drill is for the side shuffle step. So we're gonna use the tram lines once again. You're starting outside of the tram line. You're going to do a couple of side shuffle steps so that you end up on the other side of the tram lines and then you recover. So it's simply side, 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 stop, come back. That's two, a little bit faster, three. And you can see I'm not using big side shuffle steps. I'm using small ones, more of those adjustment steps. Now we do the same drill, but we try to make the steps as big as possible. So instead of these small steps, I'm now just going one, two, one, two. And you can see I'm getting my body weight in the middle of that line. So the center of gravity would be above this line and I'm pushing off one, two, three, four, five, six. The next drill is for the crossover and the cross behind step. So to begin, I'm going to be doing the left leg is always in front. So from here to there, it will be crossing over. And then on the way back, my right leg will be crossing behind. So it's gonna look like so. Cross over, cross behind. Cross over, cross behind. So there and back would be one. You can go for four or five of those in a row. And then you swap over. So now my left leg is crossing behind and then my right leg will be crossing over. So cross behind, stop, cross over, cross behind, stop, cross over. And the final drill is now for that first step speed. So I'm going to start on one singles tram line. So this line here, I'm gonna start on one leg at a time. So my right leg to begin, I push forward now with the right leg and the left leg then does its job. So from the front, it's gonna look like so. There, push off push off same position and push off balls of feet push off balls of the feet and push off now if you've enjoyed the video click that like button if you haven't done so already make sure you click that subscribe button and you turn on the notification bell so you get our latest videos as soon as we release them signing off Simon from TTT all the best and see you soon guys take care